Welcome to Adam Ejlis Media Project in the Institute for Development and Diplomacy at ADU University. I'm Anastasia Lauren and our special guest today is uh, Guido Ambroso, UNHCR country representative in Azerbaijan. Mr. Ambassador, hello and welcome to our program. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much. So UNHCR established its presence in uh, Azerbaijan in 1992. That means this year two sides celebrate 30 years of uh, cooperation, partnership. And from the country facing the humanitarian crisis in the beginning of 19s, now Azerbaijan became a very, uh, I would say, developing country, which is also providing the humanitarian assistance to many countries in the globe. Could you highlight the key element of successful cooperation and why this cooperation between UNHCR and Azerbaijan is mutually beneficial? Yes, first of all, I would argue that Azerbaijan is not a developing, but a developed country uh, according to trends of the Human Development uh, Index. We're glad and, to hear it from you. Yes, um, and uh, I know that it's uh, helping also others, uh, mainly on a bilateral basis, but also maybe also on, on a, a multilateral basis, although I don't have all the details. Uh, certainly, Azerbaijan has uh, done a lot, has invested a lot for to improve the situation of uh, IDPs, particularly the internally displaced persons who fled as a result of the first Karabakh uh, war. Um, Cooperation with the government for UNHCR and I think also for all the other agencies, but it's absolutely essential for us uh, to carry out our mandate uh, to protect, assist and find solutions for displaced persons and refugees. Cooperation is based on uh, shared objectives, uh, uh, shared uh, vision, trust uh, and constant uh, dialogue. Mutually uh, beneficial, so for UNHCR it's absolutely uh, important to have, uh, to have a good cooperation, otherwise we would not be able to, uh, to function. We are here, after all, at the request of, uh, of the government. But I think, and I think that we also have assisted, uh, as we will discuss later, uh, um, uh, Azerbaijan, uh, particularly with dealing uh, dealing with uh, the big, big emergency in the 1990s. However, sometimes I hear that um, everything has to be in the national interest or that a cooperation has to be in the national interest. But you know, UNHCR uh, does not only assist internally displaced persons who are citizens of the country, but we also, uh, our mandate is also to pr uh, work with government to protect and assist refugees who have crossed an international border and are escaping from a war and persecution. Yeah, exactly. And if I'm not mistaken, Azerbaijan has a special policy developed in support of those refugees who are coming or passing the country. Yes, uh, it does. Uh, and uh, but I think that more can more can be done. But the point I want to make is that helping these people may not be in the national interest in a very narrow uh, sense. But I think that um, a developed, uh, mature and humanitarian country like Azerbaijan should be able also to project soft power uh, and so to be uh, a little bit more open and generous also not only with the people who uh, uh, are its own citizens, but also from those who ca who came um, from from uh, from other countries, and I think this can um, help uh, also the image of uh, uh, of Azerbaijan in the international arena, and we are also here to assist uh, Azerbaijan uh, in uh, in this task. And finally, 
uh, Azerbaijan also has uh, some international obligations by being uh, a signatory to the 1951 Convention on the Status uh, of Refugees. But I'm happy to say that the cooperation and the dialogue with the government is excellent at all levels. I do understand what you mean. The problem with uh, refugees in the current world and the global world since uh, uh, 2011, I would say, since the start of the Syrian conflict, mm -hmm. it's a very actual. And Azerbaijan is trying to contribute, as I already mm -hmm. mentioned, mm -hmm. at the national and international mm -hmm. level during the uh, COVID pandemic, we saw that Azerbaijan was uh, offering different countries its assistance to deal with the uh, consequences of it. And I'm sure that the partnership between UNHCR and Azerbaijan in these particular issues when it comes to refugees can be also uh, productive and uh, efficiently developed. Uh, so another question is very important also. Um, we know uh, after the Second Karabakh War, we know that the Azerbaijani government is doing everything to make our former IDPs to come back to the native lands, to make their life there uh, prosperous. That's why all the required infrastructure and not only is being developed at the highest level. And uh, we know that the first pilot project of the smart city and smart village in Azerbaijan is being implemented mainly on uh, five components. It's the housing sector, production sector, social services, smart agriculture and alternative energy. So uh, could you tell us about the role and contribution of the UNHCR in uh, this particular policy Azerbaijan is implementing named Great Return? And what do you think about the measures taken by the Azerbaijani government in these particular issues? First of all, I uh, would like uh, maybe to go back uh, um, to 30 years ago when uh, Azerbaijan had uh, to face the, um, the consequences of a huge, huge uh, influx and catastrophic uh, situation as a result of the first uh, Karabakh war. Uh, I was here personally. I was here from 95 and 97, to, from 95 to 97. So I arrived less than a year after the end of the first Karabakh uh, conflict. And I remember very, very vividly the suffering and uh, the terrible condition in which these IDPs were um, were living at the time. Uh, and um, as the UNHCR, uh, we, uh, I think that we contributed quite a lot. And I know uh, that the government is quite uh, thankful for uh, this role uh, that UNHCR had uh, in, uh, in a period in which Azerbaijan was uh, much weaker than what it is uh, it is now in terms of uh, institutions, uh, social uh, and economic, uh, legislative, all uh, sectors. We did our part at, at the time. We are mainly uh, uh, legal protection, humanitarian and emergency oriented uh, organizations. So. I think we had an important role at the time, and as I said, I was here, I saw everything. Um, we spent over $15 million at the time uh, in emergency assistance to, um, to the IDPs. As for the situation now, uh, of course, I'm very happy that uh, now, finally, after almost 30 years, these IDPs, uh, the internally displaced, have uh, uh, the possibility finally to find a durable solution by going back, um, uh, returning to their original areas. Of course, uh, having visited uh, the conflict affected areas, uh, I, uh, I recognize the huge magnitude of the task facing the um, Azerbaijani government uh, in terms of uh, reconstruction and demining. Um, I, I uh, praise and I applaud the government for giving um, due attention to the issue of uh, of demining and i know maybe we'll talk more about it later of course. but um 
demining, I mean, safety and security together with uh, voluntariness are key international principles uh, in um, uh, implementing durable solutions and particularly the returns, the return of, uh, of uh, refugees and IDPs to their native areas. So I, I want again to, uh, to praise the effort of the government and I understand that it's a huge, huge uh, task uh, ahead. Um, UNHCR, as I said, is more of a humanitarian um, agency, humanitarian emergency and based on legal protection. Uh, apart from the work we did in the 90s, uh, we are still uh, um, assisting the IDPs with legal advice. We also had an emergency project during the second uh, conflict, uh, the one uh, in 2020. You mean the Second Karabakh War? The Second Karabakh War, yes. Um, um, we also provided uh, two million dollars of assistance uh, in core relief items and cash for those who were temporarily displaced or conflict uh, affected. Now we are providing <coughs> policy advice to the government uh, on uh, um, st international standards and best practices for uh, for IDP returns and uh, we also are in discussion with the, the government bodies to implement some projects according to their uh, to their uh, needs to the needs on the ground and uh, also uh, we are ready to cooperate with the government to discharge the mandates uh, um, to supervise IDP returns that was given uh, to us in paragraph 7 of the trilateral ceasefire uh, statement. Um, yes, that's Yes, exactly. And you already touched a very, very important and sensitive issue is the mining. We know that the government uh, bringing a lot of efforts to this because there are huge amount of mines which had to be liberated, then the construction, and then after only our former IDPs can come back to the native lands. That's why the key element, how the UNHCR is contributing in these particular issues. And if I'm not mistaken, just recently in one of your comments, statements, interview, you mentioned that the role of UNHCR can be even more effective in this process. Yes, um, first of all, uh, as you rightly mentioned, uh, uh, there is um, humanitarian demining is uh, different from military demining because with humanitarian demining you have to be 99.99% .99 sure that, uh, you know, that the area is cleared and uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, new technology, uh, uh, machinery, drones, uh, and I'm very impressed that Anama is, um, is in the vanguard, is in the forefront to develop uh, this. Uh, uh, but, you know, the terrible thing is that in the end, because you have to achieve this 99.99%, in the end, it's still uh, the human, uh, it's still a, it cannot be done just by machines, but it has to uh, be done by human people that square centimeter by square centimeter has to check, which uh, is very uh, labor uh, resource intensive, but also obviously very risky. Uh, uh, a very risky uh, we have, job. We don't have maps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, uh, the maps are very important. But you know, um, uh, mines, it sounds incredible, but mines travel. Because yes. when there is, uh, you know, the rain or the flood, and then in the war, you cannot have the 100% perfect. Uh, of course, but if we now can appropriate, let's say, as an approximate place of where course, it of course, of course, of course, I'm not easier. suggesting that I'm not. Uh, I course, mean, yeah. the, uh, everything has to be done to to have them the most accurate. But I'm just saying that even this is not 
is not enough. Sure. Uh, you know, it's, this is a huge, huge, huge task. UNHCR is not in it by itself the lead agency on uh, demining in the UN, the lead agency for uh, mine action, because its mine action is a broader concept than demining, because it involves also mine uh, education, uh, prevention, and so on. The lead agency uh, is UNDP, and uh, on mine risk education is UNICEF. So, of course, we advocate as a humanitarian agency, we very much advocate that this uh, takes place. As I said, also, uh, I admire the government and particularly ANAMA uh, for doing a great, great job. Uh, we, but we are uh, contributing to uh, mine uh, action, particularly on what they call explosive ordnance risk education and uh, trying to uh, capitalize on our contact with the IDPs so that uh, you know they are well aware of the, of the danger and the risk. So we are now having a project with uh, ANAMA, I mean through some partners of ANAMA is uh, on, on explosive risk, uh, ordinance risk uh, education. Uh, it's worth uh, it's worth approximately two hundred thousand dollars. I understand that it is a drop in the ocean, and that uh, the uh, the UN is doing its mass maximum. But uh, I I am cognizant that the scale of the needs are so huge that not no single uh, agency uh, can uh, can solve uh, can solve the problem and unfortunately it is quite clear that it will take a number of years to um, to to completely eradicate this problem imagine that not landmines but unexploded bombs uh, uh, even in my country italy uh, 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 still Still, you know, every month when they're, you know, they're digging for, you know, to construct the underground or a new, uh, or a new building, uh, they, we still find unexploded uh, bombs from the Second World War. Uh, exactly. In Vietnam, it's the same problem. Yeah. Already almost 50 years passed since the end of the war, and they're still dealing with this problem. But, uh, the, the, yeah, just I want to reiterate that, uh, uh, Demining is a precondition for safe and security. Uh, say uh, we talk about returns in safety and dignity, safety and dignity. So uh, I am very happy that this uh, issue is taken very, very seriously by the government uh, with, without rushing and pushing people to go back uh, where it could they uh, could put their lives in danger. It has to be done carefully. Exactly. Mr. Ambassador, as you already mentioned, the work of the UNHCR agency is very, very important and broad. It's not only the time of work with the IDPs who are become IDPs because of mm -hmm. war, because of conflict, but also to continue to support the people, sometimes even after they return back to the native lands. So uh, how do you see exactly this process? Because part of our former IDPs already returned back to the liberated lands. And uh, how do you see the role of these uh, former IDPs in the future development of the region? And are the, um, is the UNHCR is planning to stay in touch with these people? For us, uh, uh, as uh, UN uh, uh, and the agency and as UNHCR, but also for the government, we think that uh, uh, constant and ongoing consultation and involvement uh, uh, with the IDPs is absolutely crucial. Uh, they should also be consulted on matters con con concerning their future. We have uh, we have. Um, a concept which has been very, uh, and a tool that has been tested in many situations, we call it a participatory assessment. We did it also um, in 2016 when uh, Azerbaijan uh, uh, 
took uh, retook the Jojuk, uh, liberated Jojuk Majanli. Uh, we did a participatory assessment. So for us, it's uh, consulting uh, the, the people, uh, the displaced people, also differentiating according to uh, gender, age, uh, uh, um, to break, you know, to, to break down uh, the, the consultations so that we hear, you know, if there are different mm -hmm. opinions. And we um, are, have proposed, we have pro uh, proposed this to the government uh, also uh, in relation to uh, the, the pilot return and hopefully for the future uh, returns. We see this very much in line uh, both with our global mandate to protect, uh, find solutions and assist uh, refugees and displaced persons, but also in line with, the, uh, with the, this paragraph 7 of the trilateral ceasefire statement. So uh, we certainly are planning to uh, keep in touch uh, and to visit the IDPs uh, uh, and also to, in order to bring to the government, uh, to the attention of the government, uh, whatever successes or problems uh, that these people face. And we maybe are, you also just, I'm sorry, you can sometimes suggest how these people can also contribute to the future development of the Exactly, countries. exactly, because, uh, um, because, uh, uh, well, everything has to be around them. Uh, and uh, the government is doing, I have to say, apart from the demining, uh, uh, is doing uh, an amazing job uh, in terms of... Um, reconstructing basic or rather constructing from scratch because the level of destruction is uh, is uh, such that there is not much to reconstruct you have to construct from zero uh, uh, you know that it's quite impressive how they're working on roads electricity uh, internet connection uh, but uh, in the end, it's always about the people uh, and uh, uh, they should be at the center. And uh, I think that we can contribute and support the government in having this uh, as a neutral, impartial humanitarian organization. We can contribute and assist the government to, to have this dialogue uh, with, uh, with, the displaced, uh, with the displaced persons. And, uh, and uh, yes, um, once, once they, uh, they return and, uh, and they, have, they no longer have some special problems owing to their displacement, then we can say that they are no longer uh, displaced persons and that they found a durable solution. Of but the key word is a former, former yeah, IDPs yeah, 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 who yeah. are now living on the native lands and can yeah. think about its future yeah. development yeah. of themselves yeah. and also the region. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, we started with a, a very important uh, question on how Azerbaijan is supporting not only internal, mm. internal displaced people, persons, but also refugees who are coming from other mm. countries, who are passing the country, who would like to stay mm. here, mm. etc. And you provided some suggestions. Mm. So my final question today will be, uh, how do you evaluate of the role and position of uh, Azerbaijan at the global level when it mm. comes to the dealing with humanitarian issues, the mm. issues with the refugees and IDPs? Uh, well, obviously the job, uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the huge task uh, both, uh, you know, since the 1990s, but more after the year 2000 when I got back, uh, I got back here in Azerbaijan in 2018. Uh, uh, after completely different. Reality. Completely different. And uh, I was, uh, you know, very positively impressed by uh, the huge work that Azerbaijan did to try to settle these IDPs waiting for the return. But these uh, really amazing um, settlements that it constructed, the uh, state of the art. Uh, I, I recognize that Azerbaijan spent billions 
we in the 90s contributed with millions uh, and possibly in the 90s the millions were very important uh, but subsequently Azerbaijan st spent billions and I think that uh, a lot of it could be used as an example uh, uh, for other countries. However, when it comes to um, refugees from uh, refugees who crossed an international border and escaped because of war or persecution, I think Azerbaijan could be could do, uh, be doing more, both internally and globally. Internally, we are very grateful that nobody is. Um, push back uh, to a place where they will be in danger um, uh, against the, their own will. We are also happy that uh, the children have access to education and uh, very importantly that finally after a long time these people also have uh, legal access to the labor market can work. But more should be done because they still don't have a legal status and some issues uh, that are very simple like uh, um, opening a bank account or, um, or getting a SIM card or a driving license become very, very difficult. So we hope that they do get a, a, legal, a legal status, which means that they can be better included uh, and integrated in Azerbaijani uh, in the Azerbaijani society. Some of many of them come from uh, uh, war affected countries like first was Afghanistan and now it's Ukraine. Um, but I have to say that compared with other countries in the sub region in uh, in the sub region. Uh, no, in other countries, uh, Azerbaijan is not facing a huge influx. We're not talking about huge numbers, a few thousand, well, uh, but not tens or hundreds of thousands. And I'm not advocating that this happens, but I'm just uh, want to put it in, yeah, sure. in proportion. And uh, finally, uh, oh, I know that, uh, and I applauded that Azerbaijan, for example, from what I read in the press, is uh, sending humanitarian assistance to Ukraine. And uh, for example, I know that uh, during the COVID, uh, Azerbaijan gave uh, money, uh, funds uh, to the WHO. Yes. However, uh, for uh, uh, refugees worldwide and uh, uh, my organization is working in very many situations. Now it's Ukraine, but then, you know, it's, uh, refugees from Syria, refugees from Somalia, from, from Congo, countries. but also from Africa. Um, I, I must admit that Azerbaijan could be doing much more, particularly because we as UNHCR are um, 99 dependent on voluntary contributions from government, uh, mainly now the private sector is having a role. Uh, and uh, uh, I, it, what I'm saying is in the public, is in the public domain that um, Azerbaijan is very, very low, it's one of the lowest uh, official contribute, don, uh, contributors to, to UNHCR for its global programs. Uh, uh, I know that Azerbaijan is spending, or as I mentioned, billions for its IDPs uh, for it, uh, and for the demining. But I think that to, to uh, improve uh, its image and also to show that it's really committed to humanitarian issues on a global scale, I think Azerbaijan could increase its contribution uh, uh, to uh, UNHCR's global programs. Uh, you know, just, I'm sorry I'm saying this. Uh, in my understanding, in some particular issues when it comes to demining or work with mm. internal displaced people, persons, um, in the case with Azerbaijan, even the process of restoration of the liberated lands, we are doing it by our own efforts. We are contributing, investing billions mm. to make the process sustainable, long-lasting and efficient. 
Some other countries in the world are getting immediately huge financial support, but in our case, we are doing it by ourselves. That's why probably when we compare the contribution at the global level, that is one of the reasons why Azerbaijani uh, uh, donation is not as huge mm. as maybe other countries doing. Yeah, I mean, I have uh, recognized already several times that uh, yeah, this, is in, this, this is indeed the, the case, uh, uh, but, um, uh, but uh, you know, um, a small, you know, even uh, even uh, uh, if Azerbaijan doubles its contribution to UNHCR, it will be still very, very small in terms of Azerbaijan's global budget, you know, and uh, and uh, uh, so it will not have, you know, a huge uh, impact on Azerbaijan's finances, yet it could, uh, you know, really improve the the image and the soft power of, of the country by showing that it doesn't only care about its own internal uh, internally displaced citizens, uh, for whom, as I said, you know, I have personally witnessed the situation and I personally admire, but it also cares uh, about humanitarian um, issues and particularly the issues facing refugees uh, on a global scale. So, uh, to conclude, I can say that as we already discussed, 30 years partnership was quite efficient and successfully. Let's see how the next 30 years will be developed already in a new geopolitical reality which we face today mm -hmm. and the return of our former IDP. So, thank you so much. Thank for you. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, we, uh, the partnership uh, indeed started 30 years ago and I'm sure that uh, it will continue in a new dimension and a new phase and we are still here to work uh, with the government and to assist the government in the noble task of uh, protecting, assisting and finding solution for displaced people and refugees who are those most at risk of being left behind uh, to use the slogan of the SDGs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much Mr. Ambatov for uh, finding the time and joining our program today. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Just to remind you, watched Adam Ejdi's media project. Our special guest today is uh, Guido Ambroso, UNHCR country representative in Azerbaijan. I'm Anastasia Lavrina. Stay with us and see you in the next edition.